Hi, I'm Celine LaTulip, and today I'm talking to you about Java programming, specifically inheritance. And this is how classes can actually be subclassed to child classes. And we'll talk about this and show some examples in this sketch video. Let's go through this example, and we're going to create a class. And the class that we're going to create is going to be for a shape. So you see here I've got a sort of a template here for classes. Every class has a constructor, fields, and methods. So the constructor for shape is going to be public shape. And it's not going to there. That's the stuff that happens inside of the constructor. And then the field of shape, well, any shape is going to have um, line color and fill color and line width. So fields, we're going to make them private. And they are going to be of type color or line color. And private color or fill color, because whenever we draw a shape, we need to know what color to fill it in with. And then we'll have one other one, which will be private. This will be an integer. And this is the line width to draw it. OK, so we have three fields in our shape class. And we have um, a couple of methods. So the methods are going to be public so that they can be accessed by other code that creates shape objects or subclasses of shape. So here we'll have public void set line width. So this is what's called a setter and it allows us to change the line width field. So I'm not showing you what's inside the method. Um, and then public public int get line width which doesn't take any parameters and returns the line width. And this one would actually have some parameters. It would have int w to pass in the line width. OK, so that's our shape class. There'd actually be a whole bunch of other methods. We'd have getters and setters for the fill color and the line color and possibly some other methods in shape. But I'm not going to draw them all out here. What's interesting now is that we can actually subclass this. So let's see what that looks like. Now we're going to create a rectangle class. Rectangle. And we are going to say that rectangle class extends shape. So that means that it takes all of the methods and fields that are in the shape class and then adds more to it. So this extends is actually a keyword in Java. All right, so now we're going to have a constructor, of course, and it is going to be public rectangle. And a rectangle, when we create it, we want to create it with an x and a y for where it is, and an int w for width, int l for length. So there's a constructor for rectangle, which creates a rectangle. Now, a rectangle is going to have all of the fields and properties of shape, the line color and fill color, and line width already, but we're going to add to it. So a rectangle we need to keep track of, int width, private, int, you said, length and private int x position and y position. Okay, so those are the, the fields and properties in rectangle that we're adding to the ones we already have because we've subclassed shape. Now, there's also going to be some methods that are specific to rectangle objects, specifically the draw method. So we're going to have a public void draw. And that method will have a bunch of instructions in it. OK, so we created a rectangle class. 
But the power here is that we can create lots of subclasses from shapes. So let's go ahead and create another one. Now we'll create a circle class. Circle extends shape. Okay. Constructor public circle. And the circle constructor will probably take um, int x, int y, for the center position and int r for the radius because that's what we need to specify a circle. Circle is also going to have some of its own fields so we'll have private int center x private int center y and private int radius. So those are the things that we need to keep track of inside circle objects. And of course a circle object is also going to have methods. Again we're going to give it a draw method. So public void draw. There we go. So now we have these two subclasses, circle and rectangle that extend the parent class shape. So now we can actually go ahead and use these. So let's see what happens. Let's actually create a circle. So to create a circle we would do circle my c equals new circle and we need to send in the parameters. Let's say we want it at 100 200 and we want it to have a radius of 50. There we go. So that's going to create a circle for us. What's actually going to happen is that this is going to call the constructor for the circle class. So what does the constructor for the circle class actually look like? Well it looks like this. Public circle int x, int y, int r. And inside of the constructor we do a couple of things. First of all we assign center x, we grab that x parameter, center y gets assigned the value of the y parameter, radius gets assigned the value of the R parameter. So now we've got those. But then something special happens. There's a piece of code that says super. And this is a special keyword in Java that says call that parent constructor. So this is going to call the shape constructor. And what does the shape constructor do? Well, I'm not going to write it out, but it would do things like set default line width, maybe to 2, um, line color, maybe gets assigned color.black, and so on. So now we've created a circle, and in creating a circle, we've actually everything the shape class gives you and also the stuff that the circle class gives you. Now we can actually do interesting things with this my circ object. So with my circ object I can call methods from the shape class like set line width. Now remember set line width is not defined in circle but I can say set line width to 4 because circle inherits from shape and so we get all those methods. I can also call the stuff that's specific to circle. So my circ dot draw. And this will use the circles drawing method. Now the rectangle uh, class also has a drawing method with the same title, but it would only get called if you'd created a rectangle object. We created a circle object, so the circles draw method will get called. So this hopefully shows you the benefit of inheritance in object-oriented programming, um, that you can 
put some stuff that's common to a bunch of different types of things in a parent class and then create these child subclasses of it that give you all the common stuff and allow you to add some stuff that's specific. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a sense of what inheritance is, why it's important, and um, how it works. See you next time.